I'm the boss lady. The Kelly Evelyn Show. Watch out, let's go. Just to get inside. Gospel talking, Bible walking, wanna help you see. Faith is calling and she's walking with the victory. The king is on the side and she never quits. Put you on the show and you reminisce. Creative to the point where she's making hits. Business savvy is a Kelly. Are you kidding this? Welcome to the Kelly Holland Show. I am so excited to even say that, um, but I'm even more excited to, about today's guest, and she's going to tell us all about her journey. Audience, please help me welcome the lovely Dina Williams. Hello and welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Dina, please let our viewers know who you are and what it is that you do, lovely. Yes, I can. And thank you first and foremost for the opportunity to be on your show. I'm pleased and grateful as well. My name is Dina Williams and I'm a transformational life coach. I am also a contributor for a local TV station, THV 11 here in Little Rock, Arkansas, licensed minister, author, speaker, advocate for sexual assault survivors, as well as a mentor and a licensed minister. Wow such a resume all those letters behind your name <laughs> and I don't think they're relevant I think what's most relevant is the work that you're actually doing um how did you even begin to take training classes or want to be a part of the life coaching atmosphere well first I was a licensed minister I've been a licensed minister since 2014 and so a lot of times you know being in the church a lot of times when you give counsel or advisement a lot of times people give it to you from the book, from the Bible, and thus said the Lord in the scripture. And what I know is having the background that I've had and the journey that I've had, being an orphan, a ward of the court, going through incest, molestation, domestic violence, and different types of abuse, that when you don't, you're not in that right place or the right standing with God in further along your walk with God, a scripture, you can't apply it to your life because you don't know the meaning. You don't know how to break it down. And so someone giving you a scripture and you're not able to take that scripture and apply it to your life, it does you no good. It's just pretty much kind of like throwing water on, you know, against the wall. It's going to eventually dry. So I felt like knowing the word, having come up in church, but also knowing the word and what God had done in my life, being a certified life coach with all my life experiences would give me a twofold way to approach everyone's situation differently and understanding truly what transformation is. That is not about inspiring. It's not about aspiring. It's not about motivating them from the outside, but the transformation from inside out. Amen to that. And I couldn't agree with you more. I too am a life coach. Um, awesome. and the, right. But it, we do this for a reason. Um, audience. We, we do this because we care. We do this because we've gone down a path and we want to share with others how not to go down certain routes or what our failures was and how to overcome with the easy route. We do yes. this because we want you to be whole. Um, and so it's okay to come broken. It's okay to come with no wherewithal. It's okay um, to ask for help. Um, mental health um, benefits are available. They're not necessarily a stigma um, in certain communities and certain races and certain families. Mental health is important to maintain um, and it's too often goes overlooked. And so I'm so grateful uh, to have another service, service leader on deck um, that can definitely understand and relate. Um, is your audience mixed or is it mainly girls, youth, adults, at risk or What's your general audience when you're coaching? Mainly women, you know, um, but I do have some males. And it's funny because a lot of times the men may come in and ask a question or through couples and they're trying to figure out how to better serve their wife or significant other. But, you know, and then sometimes for some reason, men tend to share more with me about having dealt with abuse 
Mm -hmm. childhood traumas and tragedies. And so that conversation typically doesn't start out as far as coaching or seeking coaches. That conversation usually is just a general conversation and men find their way in, which is typically men are not looking for help. Men are look, not looking for you to fix them. They are solution. They are the solution. They have the solution. So mainly women coming for forward for coaching. I also work a lot with youth. And I hate to say the broken youth or children that have done, dealt with tragedies, but I know that broken children become broken adults because that was my journey. And so my, my thing is if we can go to the root cause and deal with children. So I try to deal with children, talk to parents about their children from third grade up and especially children who have lost their parents as well. That's one of my, I feel like, heart missions because I lost both of my parents. And I understand that you don't speak to children's minds or to their ears, but you speak to their heart. It makes a difference. Amen to that. I love the way you put that. Um, if you don't mind me asking, because um, on here, honey, we get transparent. And so I hope it ain't an issue. Um, but I'm um, transparent. <laughs> I'm grateful. <laughs> I'm going to pull it out. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, I, so many questions. Um, so many questions. And I just want to start with becoming a ward of the state. Um, so I read in your bio, it was six of you. Um, yes. And never put back into a whole family situation. Um, are all of your siblings doing well like you? Or was there some reaction to the circumstances that some couldn't shake just yet? Or... What are you experiencing within your own siblings? Okay. Within the six of us, I am happy to say that we are blessed. Mm -hmm. And we are blessed, and I say it but God, because we didn't know. And I personally, and as well as I'm the second of six, so I'm the second oldest, so I have to raise the younger children. Uh, but for the most part, we didn't know how to love ourselves. We didn't know how to keep ourselves. We lost our identity. I mean, we were born with a technical birthright. My father was a business owner on land property, business entrepreneur. And my mom, um, although she was 28 when she passed, my mom never worked. So we were born into a birthright of having the good life, so to speak. So there was an identity that came with being born, you know, under my parents. And when my mother died, my father overcompensated. And so we had even more of that birthright given us so that we didn't feel less than. But when my father was robbed and murdered, which was five years later when I was 12, that identity went with my father. And so we moved into homes where, you know, your name went on the refrigerator back in the day. And these were your work days, your tour days. And, and that wasn't my life. That hadn't been our life. And so you know, I was praying, God, God, take me with my father, you know, so, so much of me died with my father. I didn't want to be left behind. And that was before the abuse came. That was before verbal abuse, emotional abuse. That was before us being split up. But I can thankfully say the six of us are doing well. We've raised our children. You do come, you know, what comes with that is separation anxiety. What comes with that is not trying to pay try to educate your children, trying to protect your children, trying to teach your children, but not pass your issues on to your children. So we are conscious. We try to parent consciously. We support each other in the good, the bad, and the ugly, but we get to be honest because we are, we have a bond that's different because we are the grandparent bond. We are the mom, the parent bond, and the sibling bond because we didn't grow up with grandparents. We didn't grow up with our parents. So it's times three. So even when someone got married, it was like, you know, you're marrying it, all of us, right? Because <laughs> that is the bond that we have, you know, and we have been blessed that we've done well and God has taken care of. I have a teacher that we I keep in touch and we'll be on the phone and she cries. And I'm like, why do you cry? And she's like, because to see you all is to know that there is a God. She's yes. like, you look at y'all, you know there's a God because y'all could have checked out any time you had a reason to be on drugs, you had a reason to turn it's to the streets, you had a reason to give up, and you didn't. Right. And I know that that was nobody but God, you know, and we try to pass that on. You know, of course, then the next generation, you want them to have it better, but we each one of us pray. Our prayer was, Lord, let us raise our children. If we have children, let, let us raise them. Let us not leave them behind because we know what happens when when the parents are gone and we know that when the people that said that they are going to be there they don't step up or those that said they love you but yet you're hurt in their homes not mm -hmm. always with malicious intent i i'm thankful for everyone that stepped up because so many didn't step up and i i believe that they truly did the best that they know they knew how to do well before the abuse came in was it done by the foster environment or was it done by a family member 
because I'm just curious. We were we were never in the foster um, system, so I'm grateful for that. We were in the Delta, so there was community. So there were the friends of the parents. There were the friends. There were relatives. You know, some of my fenders were relatives. Some were the um, country cousins, as you would call it, where everybody's related. And some were people that were friend of my parents. You know, it's just you're you're in a state of vulnerability. You need help, and that's when you're at your weakest point, and you don't have that voice. You know, like I said, the identity went away because I knew I was. Radio Jane's daughter. So there was a certain voice that came with that. And when my dad died, I no longer had that. So when things happen, you don't know who can you tell, if you can tell, and if you're going to be blamed. So we were never right. in the foster system. So these things happen within family and friends, close family and friends' house. These things happen in our family they house. Know you know, yes. And and, you know, I say all the time, I was taught, I remember in the first and second grade, nay, nay, stay away from strangers. Well, strangers never get close enough to you to harm you. It's the people that say they love you. It's the people that you know that are close enough to tell you it's that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it's someone there that says, you know, no one's going to believe you. It's someone there that's going to tell you if you tell, this is going to happen. It's someone that knows what you. Yeah, yes, it's scary. someone, yeah. They they, so, they they uh, they take advantage, they abuse, and then they scare the heck out of you. Um, right. There's not a female, including myself, that I know of that has not been in one of these positions. Um, and mm -hmm. so I can relate to my sisters um, when they want to speak about being pregnant at 12 or, yes. you know, or um, how that even came to happen or, you know, what type of advice do I give to the young men who are 13-year-old fathers, like, this is not the way to go. I mean, congratulations, right. I guess. But you can't raise this baby. You're still in the sixth grade. Like, <laughs> yes, right. You raised behind. Like, you can't raise yes. this baby. What are you going to do? Um, how is it? You said the young men want to come to the females more when they're expressing um, their unfortunate um, abuse. Um, do you think that the mental health arena needs more male uh, mentors and life coaches like is that important or do you think hey we're women and we can handle all things for all audiences no I, I definitely think that we need more men and I think we need more men because in any aspect of life you always want to see someone that looks like you because when they look like you you feel like that they can re relate to you and sure. so I definitely think we need more men I think we definitely I, I would say an all ages, not not necessarily gender, um, only gender, but also race. You know, we just need it on different levels in different areas of life. You know, on the athletic, you know, you need someone there to be able to be that mentor, be that advocate, but also be that voice of reasoning and sometimes just a sounding board. I actually had a pastor of 83 share with me his story. And he said, okay. I've never shared it with my children. I've never shared it with my parents. I've never shared it with anyone. And I don't know why I can share with you, but I feel comfortable. I work in long-term care, have people at the nursing home come and disclose these things. There are people that are dying with these secrets. In fact, I used to say that if, when they buried me, I was that you were going to need two caskets, one for me and one for my secrets. I am glad to say you only need one because I've told all my secrets, I've shared all my secrets, they no longer bound to me. And as a matter of fact, don't even spend a lot of, I joke and tell my daughter, don't spend a lot of money because I'm not staying there. I'm, I'm just gonna use that one for a little while because I'm getting up, you know? And so I just, you know, I think that once you realize that your secrets that you feel like other people hold against you are really the secrets that you're holding against yourself, you start to heal, you start to forgive, and you start to move forward. I don't necessarily, I share all the time about what happened to me, and people can look at my family line and where I live to know what happened. They don't know necessarily the who, because when I was hurt, I wanted to share the name because I was hurt. Hurt people hurt people, but when you're healing and you're healed through some things, it's no longer about them, so you don't have to call their name. And when you realize that you are better and not bitter, you don't call their name. And I love to be transparent because I believe transparency is the thing that transforms. Amen. And I just like the way you finish it up like that. Like that's a <laughs> business quote or something. And that is the way it's transformed. <laughs> <That is. laughs> 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. And you are such Thank an inspiration you. to others. You are welcome. Um, how long did it take for you to form these, these type of networks and these type of connections with people? Because in any business or in any project, we definitely need supporters and resources. Um, but for you to have a career, but then to take on this whole new mission, you know, um, what's the process for people that want to help others and they, they just don't know where to start? I tell everyone, you start with sharing your story, because if you can't share your story, then you're not being honest with yourself and you're not going to be honest with other people. That from the heart reaches the heart. If your story is pretty and has no flaws, then the people that are broken can't be honest with you at all. You know, they're going to tell you what they think you want to hear. So I, I say it starts with you sharing your story. And a lot of times sharing your story starts with helping someone else. When you serve other people, you serve yourself. Amen. It's about servant. It's about what we're called to do. We're called to be servant. Servants were called to serve. And that is how my story started being told. I had a college best friend who found out that his grandfather was funneling their children. He, their, all the siblings, the girls, he would always give them like the horse ride on his lap. And my best friend, Mel, had given his life to God and was doing really, really well. And he got a call and he was told that this had been happening. He had about lost his mind and was questioning his faith. And God, where are you? And I said, do you think it's just your family? Do you think it was just these girls? Let me tell you about me. And I started sharing my story and I started going to tell my story. And I used to tell that story with no song in my heart because it was for the pity and it was like the woe is me it was that victim mentality but when that shift happens you start to t tell your story because you realize you now have a song in your life and I in, in your heart and I realized that life for a long time to me it seemed like life happened to me what I know now is that life happened for me and that's what I would tell someone else what is your pain in life because when you go back to that pain point when you go back to that first place where you were let down or someone hurt you you're going to go back and find your pain point that's going to fuel your passion and your passion is what's going to fuel your purpose. Yeah, wow. pain definitely helped me find my purpose. Um, yes. Divorced mother, um, went through an abusive relationship, every level of divorce that they have written down on them papers you check off when you want to get a divorce report, I checked them all off because they were all yes. meant to me. Um, and I did not know how, why, or where I would end up. Um, and I say this so for our viewers, um, it's okay to not have the plan right away. It's okay to take a moment and just a moment <laughs> to, right. to kind of cry over it. But at the very end, you must get up. You will you get, get up. up. You must yes. begin to climb that Rocky Mountain. You must begin to restart if you need to restart. Never give up. Uh, there is happiness for you as time go by and time definitely does heal us in some type of way if you want to be healed. Um, if you do not want to be healed, then you'll try to keep projecting onto others your negativity. And that's yes. what we're here for. We're here to help each other. We're here to love one another. That's a great command right there. Um, so it's very important that when things are happening and they're not truly of you, um, it's not always against you. Maybe it's just that lesson, that hard knock life lesson that we have to go through very quickly. Um, or we could walk around the mountain for 40 years, but I'm not down with that. So yeah. we go through this, <laughs> okay, we go through this mountain uh, of challenges so we can fast pace us and grow us up and get us prepared. So we know that, yeah, we know how to be a wife, but we know how to be a spouse, or we know how to be a husband. However, there's this other part of our life that we don't know. And in finding that other part, you find yourself first. Um, and then you start to set your boundaries. And it's okay to tell people no. It's okay to not give them an explanation on why you told them no. It's okay to not share or be open with your time, money, or anything else. It's okay to, to, to not agree and to go along with certain things. It's okay to not do that because those are kind of bullies. If you ask right. me, you know, they, they really don't give you a space to think for yourself. They just want you to follow them, have your own mind, people, and you'll be so happy at the pace that you make, especially when you recover to a point where you could turn around and help others. Right. That is yes, that is so true. And for me, you know, even a lot of times with us being brought up in the church and Christians, we believe and 
and we understand what people tell us. And so God's been good to you. You got to be good to everybody else. So, so many of us give what we don't have for so long. So many of us give from an empty place, but understanding what it is that, you know, I thought that in order to not be selfish, I had to be selfless. But what I learned is that I don't have to be selfish. I don't have to be selfless, but finding my place to be self full. That if I will pour into myself, allow myself to be poured into, then I can give from the overflow. You know, I can share with you. I can be there for you. But I have to be, like you said, you start with self and know that it's not being a bad Christian. It's not not doing what God wants to do for you. As a minister, I told my uh, sister once, she was like, well, give me do this and be that. And I've given a lot of things to her, but she didn't remember. And she didn't re recall it to the way she, the facts of her her the way she wants to recall and she said well you're not really there for me you hadn't been there and when you get to the gate god's going to ask you this that and the other and i said you think i said well the next time i'm at church and i preach i want you to be there because i'm going to preach a sermon that's going to be inspired by you she said what's the name of it i said stop pimping the god in me i said people will you know <laughs> and she looked at me i said people will pimp the god in you but what about the god in them what mm -hmm. about their spiritual walk what about them giving it's not always about taking and you know even in church i did i was so busy in church i thought that's what i was called to do Wait, and I had to do. So her. <laughs> I, I hope you come to church next Sunday because the sermon is going to be about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And let me tell you, and I laugh, but I've used that because I had to, but it was a revelation for me because I had allowed people to pimp the God in me. I had allowed people, because I kept saying, I love God and God is first. And, and people will use and abuse you in the church. People will use and abuse you outside of the church because you go to church. <laughs> and we have to find that harmony and that, you know, I say the balance, but the harmony, making all things work together because you give to everyone else and you're not giving to yourself, then you're failing stuff and you're technically failing everyone else amen to that amen to that self-help is always needed um and taking time out for your self-help um is always necessary and we're not just talking on weekends we're talking about you know just yes. really doing something for you um so in the early days i i hated going out on friday nights but I just had to because it was Friday night. And mm -hmm. all I would see is like all the couples just automatically are coming my way. And I'm like, this is so sickening. Like, <laughs> anybody out here by themselves like me? Like, right. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, it was just yeah. rolls of two. Like this was Noah's Ark or something. I was so discouraged. And after a while, I loved it. I gave it a new title. I'm dating me. Mm -hmm. self date time. Mm -hmm. I'm dating me. I could yeah. never go out and eat by myself. Now, honey, I don't want it any other way because I don't want you <laughs> telling me what you don't eat, what I need to eat, where I need to go. If you don't like this type of food, this type of cuisine, you can't keep up with the spice. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's oh, And it's okay with me. It it's is okay, okay with yes. me. I actually okay. enjoy it now. Yes. Oh my gosh, you have no idea. <laughs> I do have friends that I can go out with now, but I didn't have those friends in the very beginning. I had to learn how to develop a friendship with other women. Yes. You know, these abusive relationships kind of pull you away from people in society. Yes, yes. Yeah. So once I started doing those things, um, it was such a relax. Um, it was very motivating. I wasn't sad. I didn't feel by myself. I did not feel lonely. Um, and, and it helped me understand what self-love is. It's just taking the time out to do what you want to do for you, you know, and, and maybe uh, improving upon some things yes. about you. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and when you spend time with yourself, you know, my sister and I, we would talk and I've been single for a long time. And she says, well, Dana, you have all these requirements. So her joke is, you want President Obama. I said, no, there's only one Michelle and there's only one President Obama. But I do know what I require. I went through too much and I've been through too much and to settle for anything. So I always say, I'm not coming down off the wall just to play. I'm not going to do that, you know. And, and I mean that. And it's not necessarily anything about anyone else is simply because when you know yourself you're okay with self and you love yourself you know what you require yes. and when you know what you require it's not even about what the other person requires because it's either gonna mesh or it's not and so you you learn that you know uh, being by yourself is so funny you said that I remember having a procedure and you know they take you to the back and they leave you back there by yourself and I'm sitting there and I was like this is too much time by myself I'm good company bring somebody back here with me you know and I'm trying to figure out how to become this artist on the wall looking for figures and things but it is it's about that quiet time it's about that long 
own time. It's about the time itself. And then that you can be okay with self, that you're not picking self apart when you're by yourself. You're not your, your own worst critic that you're like, I, there are great things about you. I love you. Let me empower you. Girl, you did that. Celebrating yourself, loving on yes. yourself. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Because the battle with the mind is real, honey. <laughs> child son bruh <laughs> the battle <laughs> of the mind is real i mean you can yeah. really tear yourself down in your own head you can give yourself all type of anxiety issues depression issues um and even worse your mental health just debilitates you know when you sit when you ain't gotten that shower in a couple of days and you stank yeah. it and everything mm-hmm. is growing where it ain't supposed to be growing that's right. why you're gonna spend too much time in that bed get up yes. wash for all of us, please. Yes. <laughs> Stop Most definitely. yourself. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. I agree. That those are the symptoms, y'all. Yes. That's right. Pay attention to the signs. They okay. are there. Flash that. Yes. Definitely there. Um, I wish we could go on and on. Um, we're gonna have to bring you back for part two, honey, because I feel like there's way more that you could share and to um educate our audience with. But before you leave, please let us know where we can find you where uh, your platforms, any new projects you have coming out, um, and how they can reach them. This is your time to plug away. All right. Well, I am your life coach, Dina, transformation life coach, author, speaker, advocate, minister. I can be found on all social media platforms at Get Move, which is the title of my book, Get Move, Mapping Out Victory Each Day, Self-Empowerment Through Self-Discovery. It can be found on Amazon as well. You can also direct message me and get your autographed copy. I am also on KTHB 11 local news station here in Little Rock, or you can get the app where you can find me Monday mornings, motivating you, your life coach, Dina. Also, if you will just find me Facebook, social media, Dina Williams, LinkedIn, Dina Williams, and again, Instagram, get moved. Thank you. Thank you for this time as well. You are so welcome. And we're so glad to have had you here. You must come back so we can continue with our conversation. And we'll we do. Thank you. All right. But thank you, audience, for tuning in. We hope that you will tune in next week. I hope so. Um, with that in <laughs> mind, never forget to tap back into your un-